I didn't call you on your birthday. That's what I was upset about. The first week of January is always a tough time for me. I know that you didn't care because you knew I was going abroad. But I want you to know that it is one of the biggest regrets of my life. I should have called you when we landed or something, but I didn't. It is something I think about around your birthday. A few days before you died, I tried to make it up with a postcard from Berlin that said, Lo siento por no te ama en tu cumpleaños. Espero que esta postal lo compense. Con cariño, Jessica Ann Rodriguez. I wanted to ask Irma if it made it to the house, but I didn't want to upset her more than she already was. I know you would have showed it off to anyone that you could. I will never stop being sorry for not calling you. I don't care what anyone says. You always wanted me to be a strong and independent woman. I'm trying my best to be for you. It's really hard sometimes knowing you're not here to see my big milestones like you did for everyone else. It's no one's fault. It just happened this way. I wish I could have said goodbye one last time. Sometimes I just wish that I could call you even if I spoke to you in broken half Spanish and half English. It wouldn't have mattered because you would have listened and loved talking to me about my current adventures. I have a lot of admiration and respect for who you were in my life. I wish I could truly, truly come up with the words to tell you how much I love you and how much you mean to me. I know you are in a happier place, and I know one day we will see one another. For now, I can just remember you. As the inscription on a statue you once gave me says, I love you, today, tomorrow, always. My brother flew to meet my parents so that he could attend your funeral. They visited my grandma Spragans, the mother of my mom, who didn't know about your passing. No one could tell her because she had dementia and heart problems. My mom's family had been advised years ago not to tell her because of her heart and the fact that her mind would cycle information over and over again. She wouldn't have been strong enough for that kind of news. They didn't tell her about one of my cousins who had died and they were definitely not going to tell her about you. My brother brought his son who was about six months old at the time and she got to meet him for the first time. As she held him in her arms, playing with him, pinching his cheeks and any chubby part of his body for that matter, she looked at my father, your son, and said to him in Spanish, your mother must be very happy my brother and my mom turned and looked at him, not knowing what he was going to say. He smiled at her and replied, She is very happy right now. They told you where I was so you knew I was in Europe. I sent a postcard to you too. Yours was with love from Paris. In February, I was in the car with Lainey when I got the idea to visit you. All I knew was that I had to see you. She told me I should go sooner than summertime, so I pitched the idea of going during my spring break. And soon my tickets were booked. The first week of Lent is always hard for me. My mom called me on a Thursday and told me that you were in the hospital, which wasn't completely unusual. Friday, she told me that you had asked for her and she needed to go 
to see you. Saturday, I drove her to the airport so that she could be with you. And Sunday morning, she had called me with the news. You died two weeks before my spring break. All I wanted to do was make sure you were okay. I hadn't seen you since August, and my mother told me you were asking about me. I couldn't believe I was going to lose you too. You were so loving and kind. Your cooking made me feel like I was home. Every time I said goodbye to you, I would always cry and hold you. The only phrase I memorized in Spanish was, Te amo con todo mi corazón. No lo olvides nunca, por favor. I love you with all my heart. Please don't ever forget that. I just wanted to see you and spend time with you. You were forgetting who I was. There were times when you thought I was my mom. It's not your fault, but your faded memory didn't make it any easier. When we were together, you still treated me like a baby. I was your baby, and I was okay with that. You always grabbed my face and held it close to yours. Even if we didn't understand each other, that didn't matter. You always showed me love in other ways. I often sat with you in your room when you were watching your telenovelas, and just being next to you was very special to me. You always had a wonderful sense of humor, and you never failed to make me laugh, even if we didn't understand each other. It's something I think of when I laugh with my own mother. Every time I'm with your daughter, I'm reminded of you. I'm so grateful that she got to see you in time and be with you in your last moments. In the weeks leading up to my visit, I was trying to brush up on my Spanish. I spent an hour a night trying to make sure I could at least speak to you in basic Spanish so you would be able to understand me. In some respects, I think it was to make up for our lost time. I'm trying to learn again. I love you so much, and I know that you are proud of me. I just wish I got to spend time with you like I had planned. I pray that you know how much I love you and how I miss you. My family and I try to focus on the good memories that we have of you too. We have to. It's something that my parents and I often bond over, sharing memories or stories at the dinner table together and filling the space with laughter, thinking of you too. Of course I miss you. I will always miss you. But it's not as hard as it used to be though, because I know that I will always remember you. Always. With love, from your granddaughter.